Now, as appendix, as an addition to what we have just been saying concerning uh, the verse uh, 64 and 8, when we look up um, ancient Egypt, light of the world, right, the sign language and mythology in this book by Gerald Macy, it says that the earliest form of divine fatherhood was outlined through, though not perfected, in the pygmy, Ptah. Hence, one of the earliest titles is as the father of fathers. And we also have um, other particular links, but let's go into this particular one from um, Gerald Macy. Now, our reference was Ptah, Macy, and fatherhood because we knew it was there. And in this particular teaching, we touch on that in order to um, um, explicate and explain the point clearer. Now, when we go right here, we're going to actually get into a little bit more of this right here where it says down there the earliest, let's, right here, the earliest form of a divine fatherhood was outlined, though not perfected, in the pygmy. The pygmy. And one thing that ones have often said about his imperial majesty is they've, they've, um, recognized and some have even sought to mock in an ignorant fashion his majesty's um small physical stature you understand even liking him to a pygmy the pygmy pata hence one of his titles we have here is as the father of fathers which indicates the fatherhood that was founded on the eldest brother on the eldest brother now According to Christina or true Christianity, the eldest brother is Getachin Jesus Christos. Our true big brother is actually Christ. Now, Ptah was a what? A solar god who did not attain the status of a ray, who did not attain the status of ray. Now, there's other links to this, but this is, this is one that's significant right here. This is one that's very significant, and this was in the theology of Thebes and Memphis, the creator of all creations according to the latter or the solar mythology. But the earliest form now of a divine fatherhood was outlined, though it was not perfected, in the pygmy pata. And this is on page uh, 385, I mean 345, it's uh, 345 of the work Ancient Egypt, Light of the World, Sign Language and Mythology. And um, this particular book, well, you can't download it here, but you can read it right here. This particular book is very important. But if we will go through other references, you understand, and search the book out, you understand, and go through other particular references and put Pata here within this particular book and find out where else, it is also mentioned. We'll find other particular links, but that is a good starting point right there. You understand concerning Pata. Now, if you look, there are a hundred results for Pata in this particular in this particular book. Now, if we would narrow down, let's try to narrow down our searches and put Pata and Father. Put Pata and Father. You understand? Pata and father, then we can also go Pata and um, Potter. Now, when we do that, we narrow it down to 46 results, to 46 particular results. And it's a very much interested where it says the title of Pata is Kepa, has the meaning of becoming, becoming. And in his Majesty's teaching, he speaks about peace is not an is, but it is a, a, a becoming. And it says the name of the son, Iyu, or Yo, signifies the coming one. This was he who came forever, first as manifestator for the mother, the seed of the woman, which we have as Yeshua, or the black Christ, or the black Lord, Jesus Christos, Jesus Christ. And then it says, and them as representative of the father. Now, in the cult, or really more correctly, the culture of Ptah, both characters, the father and the son, were combined into one God. Both were continued in 
atum or the fitum or perfection or the absolute. Now, Eu was the bringer of peace. The bringer of peace was God, the coming son in both religions. The coming son, we repeat, was the ever, the ever coming one. You understand? There was the ever coming one. Now, Macy says right here, there was no advent once for all, because remember, Macy is battling. Gerald Macy sought to battle against um, whitewashed Christianity. This is one thing that Gerald Macy basically recognized. He recognized that the true roots were actually to be found in inner Africa. But if we go through some of the other works, it will also show us that. But to resume, it says right here, the dramatis personae, in the Hebrew books of wisdom are chiefly the father and son, are chiefly the father and son. The father is Ihu or Yehu or Yahweh, the self-existent and eternal God, and Iyu, Iyo, or Isu, you understand, is the messianic son as manifester in the cycles of all time. Of all time, it is the father that is speaking of one of these periods, possibly what they call a sothaic cycle, who says in Estrus or Estrus, the time shall come. My son Jesus or Yeshua shall be revealed with those that, that be with him. And they that remain shall rejoice within, what, 400 years. This was long thought to have been a prophecy of Christ that was to come as an historical personage. Now, Macy basically proves that according to white Christianity or whitewashed Christianity, counterfeit Christianity, that did not come to pass. But he gives us enough evidence of the past to recognize our present dispensation and see the revelation in Rastafari. Now, remember, we're not going to go through all 46 of these, but it's very interesting that where we did touch does link us powerfully once again to this particular area that we're in scripture right here. And this is what we've been studying right here at 68 and 8, and we even presented on the whiteboard, you understand, presented on the whiteboard over here. All right. 